Hi, and welcome to Conversion Conversations. This is Cameron, and today I'm taking a look at Transformers Generations Studio Series 101. We've got TerrorCon Scourge in the house, uh, and this is my uh, first uh, Rise of the Beasts review that's happened after I've seen the movie. I, I did Cheetor beforehand. Um, if I haven't been reviewing a lot of these figures, it's because it's been very hard to get my hands on them. This is my second one. Uh, but we do have a leader class Scourge here in a, a big, menacing uh, pickup truck, not pickup truck, semi truck uh, looking thing. Um, I do have some issues with it, but I will say right now I'm super excited to have it in hand, specifically because uh, this movie was a lot of fun. It is probably my second favorite Transformers live action movie after Bumblebee. And the background we get is from that museum fight scene. And I really like that fight scene. That was probably the highlight action scene of the movie for me. Um, so getting that and getting Scourge here, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty happy camper. I will say um, it does feel, I mean, the sculpting is really good, but the, um, the transformation and then like, if I'm just focused on the alt mode, this feels maybe a little more like a retail release than what I kind of expect from a studio series. Like there's little gappy bits here that I kind of wasn't expecting from a studio series alt mode. Um, these pieces kind of, they don't really lock in a place. The smokestacks, which is a little disappointing. We kind of just have robot arms hanging out in the back. Um, I was hoping this section would compress a little more. Um, I, I think I was hoping that this would be a little bigger um, but I guess if they're trying to do scale, like, I, I don't know that I've got anything good to compare to scale right now, but I'll use this to compare um, my my future Rise of the Beast Studio Series figures. But yeah, I mean, he, he looks pretty good. I do like that he comes in this dark gray metallic. We've got gunmetal gray. We've got kind of dirt smears on the side. That paint application looks way better than when they were doing battle damage. So I really like that. A little bit of yellow, transparent uh, orange plastic um, there. He does look very, very menacing if you're looking at the grill up front. He's got all the badges and stuff. I dig it a lot. All that's there. If you notice, mine, like, it's, it's kind of a fiddly transformation. And getting him into alt mode and getting everything lined up. Um, take some like once you get them you got to kind of twist and compress and, and things like that that is a little annoying but he does roll just fine uh, and he looks pretty cool I, I do dig it overall um, despite what I was complaining about uh, and yeah this in this mode you know he his, his wheels turn and that's really all you you super care about he doesn't have any sort of functional hitch, which is maybe a little disappointing. Um, it comes with this backdrop, which will move to the back as we focus on just the toy. Um, overall, I think that uh, I, I think it's a pretty cool leader class toy, maybe a little smaller than I was hoping for, and maybe I like it specifically because I really liked Scourge. I thought Peter Dinklage did a great job as Scourge. Um, so I'm holding on to it maybe a little more than I should, um, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, this truck mode, but I'm not going to be displaying it in this mode. So let's go ahead and get in transformation. First thing, we're going to pull uh, this piece off. This becomes his uh, projectile weapon, his gun. We just twist our two uh, pieces of the sides around and then compress it. And there is a place to stick onto his elbow, and here is his gun piece. Unpainted plastic. Could have used some gunmetal highlighting or something, but we can leave that to the side. Next, we're going to come in and we're going to flip up the two sides here, bringing our smoke stacks down. And here, this is what I'm talking about, where if if I bring them down, you notice on here, there should have been two tabs and there should have been slots in the smoke stack. So when you get it to this position, it is not only held by the friction of this connection, but also by the tabs. That would have, that would have been very helpful. Uh, get those out of the way. Uh, then we can come in and we can fold. We're going to reveal our, our uh, head and everything here. We're going to fold this wheel down, which unlocks, uh, it, it locks in kind of over where the grill would be. So now we can bring our grill down and this kind of rotates, pulling this to the side. There we go. This wheel also comes down and our grill section uh, is on a, a joint that rotates down and then this arm comes out 
to kind of create our, our chest piece. And there is a slot uh, in the orange piece that goes onto the tab on his chest. Get that locked into place. Then he can bring down his fender, bring that down and fold these sections up to form a pretty solid chest. I, I do dig that bit of transformation. Um, with that out of the way, we can go ahead and do the legs for stability. Uh, they come apart. There's two uh, pins, not pins, but pegs uh, that are in holes on either side. This sword section comes out. I do wish this folded up more. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, we can, now that we got the legs around, we can rotate them 180 on each side. We can flip down the toes and then slide them around. Same thing on this side. It unpegs, flips down, and comes around. And there are his legs, which we can use to help him stand. And then we can come up, and now that we've got this uh, sword arm free, we can bring this whole section. Uh, I guess we can, oop, something fell off off camera. Don't worry about it. Uh, we can bring this whole cab section out to give us a little more room to work. And then we can bring in the arm all the way around and it's got a tab, same thing on this side. Tab right here goes into a shoulder slot right there. Letting us bring the arms out to the sides and then dropping those shoulders down. I do feel like, maybe I'm misremembering stuff, but the shoulders could have been a little higher, I think. Um, with this arm out, we can fold up the sword as far as it goes. I really wish it had two hinges and it could flip back uh, to like kind of a, a sheath position behind him. As is, it kind of comes out like this. It's fine, but I, I wish it compressed more. It did, it definitely did in the, uh, in the movie. Uh, and then we can come in on the back here on his bits and parts. Uh, we've got these panels that come in on either side. And then this piece comes down and folds down, covering it up. And we get a slot here that goes into the tab on his back. I believe we, ah, there we go. Push it down to get to that slot. And here is Scourge in his robot mode. And I'd say um, it does look menacing and evil, but it maybe doesn't have 100% of the same presence as Scourge did in the movie. I feel like Scourge in the movie was a, oh, the very last thing we're gonna compress those tires. There we go. Uh, those the, those bottom tires fit, sit uh, more flush on his legs. But he, he feels a little on the skinny side. Um, he's going like toe-to-toe -to -toe with Optimus Prime in like brawls and fights. And I think I wanted Scourge to be a little bulkier. If they just took like this design and they just widened it by like 10% or 25%, I feel like that would have matched movie Scourge a little bit better. As is, he just looks a little skinny. I wonder if part of it is also his head. His head feels small now that I've seen the movie. Um, I don't know how much of that is just my like impression versus what, what the actual design was. But as is, I mean, he looks awesome. He looks evil and powerful and dangerous. He just looks maybe a little too lithe. Not like skinny, but lithe. Um, oh, this gun we can also, uh, it's got a tab on the back. We can port that into his butt like so, so he, he can carry everything on him. And again, if we put him back there, uh, bring this whole thing forward and put him, if you want him looking like this, uh, you know, you can have a, a him with a freshly murdered bumblebee uh, on, on this display background, and that would be pretty cool. Overall, like, I like it. I, I think, I, again, just it doesn't quite look right in robot mode, and it doesn't quite look right in uh, truck mode, and that's what makes me think, like, it, it, it doesn't 100% feel like a studio series design because I felt like they were going for as much accuracy as possible. In terms of posability, though, he's, he's pretty rock solid. Uh, we've got, you know, a two joints on the head. We've got this top joint on the head, and we've got his mask. The mask doesn't come off, which may be a little bit disappointing, uh, but I thought he looked way cooler with the mask than without it. Um, we do have extra waggle on this little neck joint, which again could maybe have been a little wider. Um, we've got shoulder articulation. You got to kind of move uh, the backpack out of the way with, but it goes 360. Uh, the, the shoulder can go up all the way, no problem. It does have a bicep swivel. 
it does have an elbow, um, it does, this hand can come out. I do wish, here's another thing, I wish these were jointed so that they could, you know, collapse and fold in a bit more instead of just being soft rubber. This arm, same exact articulation. Um, again, this blade can come fold up into his hand, which is neat, but I wish it folded back more. Um, I wish it could fold away a bit more. I feel like his shoulders droop a little bit. I think I mentioned that, but his shoulder line, maybe it's this, this neck piece that elevates where I think his shoulder cap should be, um, but uh, he still looks pretty cool. He does have waist swivel. Um, he can go the full Van Dam, no problem. He can kick up so high. He can kick back so far until his backpack makes uh, uh, you know, a conflict. Uh, he does have 90 degree knee bend. He does have thigh swivel. He does have multi-jointed ankle. He's got tilt. He's got forward, backward. It locks into place. Um, so yeah, he is a pretty poseable figure. Uh, can definitely get him into some cool dynamic poses. You can also rip off this arm, which does have a port here that can peg back here. I do wish this stored away a little better. Um, or, in fact, I'll show you what I really wish. Store it back there. This piece can come in. So it's got a, a keyed slot that can slide right onto his bicep. Uh, so there you can, you know, he can stab someone real good and then bring in his blaster and blast him away. Um, I wish that uh, this piece didn't detach. I wish instead that this was a peg in the arm and it just pegged in here and then like collapsed over it. Maybe that's less movie accurate, but I think that would have been cooler. Um, I, don't, I don't care much for these like detaching limbs that we seem to be getting more and more often. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he has his weapons that he did in the movie. Um, he does look menacing and dangerous, even if it's not exactly how he was portrayed in the movie. Um, I think he looks pretty great. Like I said, I don't have anything else to really compare him to. The only other Rise of the Beast figure I have is Cheetor. So let's go ahead and get Cheetor in here. Uh, you know, if you want them facing off, this is how they look. So, I mean, in this version, like in this mode, you can definitely see the size difference between Voyager and Leader Class. Um, but I could have done with a little more heft, even if it wasn't any taller. Um, yeah, as is, I think, uh, I think it's a figure that hopefully we can find on sale. I'd be curious to see what the like main movie line Rise of the Beast version of Scourge is. The, the, does anyone else agree with me that the Toy line for Rise of the Beast seems a little odd. We got Studio Series figures. There, I can't find them in stores anywhere. We got mainline figures. I can't find those in stores or online. I, I'm not sure what's going on. I like more of these. I like the movie. I want toys of the characters, um, but it, I just can't seem to get my hands on them, which is unfortunate, hopefully in the future. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the look at Transformers. Generation Studio Series 101 Scourge from Rise of the Beasts. If you haven't seen the movie yet, go see it. I've seen it twice by this point. Um, I really liked it. I highly recommend it. Um, this figure, I don't know that I like super highly recommend, uh, but if you want this character on your shelf, this is the way to do it. All right, that's it. Uh, thanks to everyone for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Bye. All right, it is time to announce the winner of Transformers Generations Legacy Evolution Metal Hawk. Uh, here on the left side, we have, well, here on the right side, we have all the comments of the video. And then here on the left side are all the entries. We had 24 for this one. Uh, so let's pick our random winner between 1 and 24. Rand between 1 and 24. And our winner is number 5. Uh, number five is Transformers Fan 444. Um, so, <laughs> it, yeah, this one is a deluxe size pretender in a robot with a Voyager shell. I'd be down, I, I, like I said in the video, I'd be curious about if they could make pretender shells work in the modern day. I think a lot of the answers regarding, like, needing articulation are, are super important. Like, I think uh, people don't want to buy, like, bricks or, like, big, necessarily big vinyl figures when they're looking for Transformers. Uh, but uh, Transformers fan 4444, congratulations.
um, reach out to me uh, now that you've won. Reach out to me. Uh, I, I'm on Discord, you know, all the different social media. However you want to get in touch with me, go ahead uh, confirming that you won. And then you give me your address and I'll ship out um, Metal Hawk to you uh, next week, hopefully. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching.